Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a Starseed pick a card reading for Pisces season 2020. Although this reading is absolutely timeless. So if you sync up with this at some other point in the future, it doesn't matter how many years from now this reading is for you. Um, it just, that just means that, you know, a bunch of us went through these energies now and you're going through the same thing at some other point in time. Um, don't let the time frame um, distract you too much. And if you're wondering what a starseed is, I'm using that term just to refer to anybody who thinks that they had lives on other planets. And you can basically take that as far as you want in terms of how much you want to dig deep into starseed subculture. And if you're somehow stumbled across this video and you're wondering if you are a starseed, like maybe you don't know anything about your past lives or maybe you think this all sounds crazy, um, I completely understand where you're coming from because I've, <laughs> I was there not too long ago. And let me just say that anybody who came across this video, I would invite you to think about all of the weird little coincidences that led you here. Um, and why would you have clicked on a video for star seeds if you weren't one yourself? Uh, because it is interesting that you have even seen or heard of the word star seed, seeing as uh, at the beginning of 2020, this is an incredibly niche topic. So that's just some food for thought. And I'm really excited to be doing this reading because it's the first one I'm going to be doing for star seeds. And for this, I don't care, you know, what kind of star systems or ance like alien ancestry you guys are resonating with. This is for anybody um, who is a star seed or thinks they might be one and go ahead and pick your card. It's just pile one, pile two, and pile three, and the timestamps are down below in the description box. Okay, pile number one. Here we go. Just taking a quick like glance at these cards, it is pretty clear to me that you guys are probably uh, either right now or sitting here going, this star seed stuff is bullshit, or but yet secretly kind of wondering if it's not, or you're just recently you know, maybe in the past several months, kind of stumbling along on this journey because the center of this spread here, we have the Six of Swords and, you know, she's not on a boat, you know, leaving a painful past, she, but she is looking back on a battlefield. And But you can see, look how poised she is. Yet, you know, she is looking back at all of this kind of tragic past conflict and suffering behind her. But I, you know, I can feel that, you know, once she has her last look here, she's not going to turn into a pillar of assault. She's going to keep moving forward and she's going to be able to walk past this battlefield. So you guys are definitely leaving something behind. You're leaving almost, almost like in some senses your entire life behind. And it doesn't actually have to manifest that way in your, like in your life. You know, you, you don't have to be moving. You don't have to be going through a breakup, you don't have to be getting a new job or graduating or any of that. But, you know, this, this shift can be happening on a really like deep level where, you know, in, in a year, you might not recognize your life at all. Because right now, I mean, especially if you're watching this during Pisces season, um, this idea of leaving this all behind, because that's really that Pisces energy of like dissolving yourself and then being reborn once we move on into Aries. You know, it's that, that 12th house energy of pulling everything apart and dissolving. I actually had, <laughs> the sun just moved into Pisces last night. Um, obviously not while the sun was up for me, but while I was asleep and I kept having these dreams that I would, that I was just dissolving into things. And uh, I actually like my dream state and my waking, like waking up in bed was all really blending together. And I was having trouble telling when I was asleep and when I, when I was awake. So there's a lot of that, uh, going on right now and what you're leaving behind. Um, I'm drawn down to the queen of crystals down here, which is in, you know, this is the shadow position of this spread. So, uh, this is, you know, the queen of crystals is not a bad card. This is not like a shadow card, like a you know, a negative card, but in this place, in the spread, it does represent where you've been and what you're going to be moving on from. So maybe you've been really, not necessarily like materialistic and literal, but that kind of vibe where 
you maybe you were had had been thinking that you know this is all there is to life there is no more than this you know this is who i am this is what i'm stuck with you know this life was uh, a bit of a raw deal you know i didn't choose where i was born i didn't choose any of this this has all just happened to me and kind of just you were in this place of being very literal in the material environment i don't think this is like a materialistic like shallow energy but um almost more of like an atheist energy somebody who was really just maybe wanted to even if you wanted to believe that there was more to life than this you just didn't you didn't believe it um but you're moving on from that paradigm because uh, your limitations in karma is the moon. The moon. So those illusions, it, it's weird to think, you know, that our, <laughs> our physical reality on some levels is the illusion. And I think that's what this card is, is pointing for. Like, look, she actually has her hands down to the ground. And but if you can see her shadow self is reaching up uh, towards the stars. We have the moon cycles here. So I feel like you guys are going to be cycling through. Uh, and just look at this vertical movement here. Um, your ambitions is to be the empress. And the, I, I really understand uh, this evolution, actually, because when I first got this deck, and I, for, for, this is actually the deck that woke me up. Um, I got it, I actually, before I knew anything about starseeds. And it, it, you actually have the starseed card over here. Look at this. I, I saw this card and I was like, what the hell is a starseed? I looked it up and, you know, balled my eyes in for three days because, you know, I was having so much stuff like <laughs> to work through all at once, all of a sudden. And I was getting the queen of crystals and the empress. And for me, the beginning of this like awakening journey um, was me becoming the empress. <laughs> so it, it's weird. This this reading could have been for myself about a year ago. Um Oh, look at that. You're, you're graduating from the Queen of Crystals, which is already a position of power, position of strength, a good position to be in. You guys are going to be graduating on up through kind of unraveling these illusions. And isn't it interesting to get the moon in Pisces season? <laughs> uh, you know, they are associated. And you're going to be graduating on up into the Empress. And I really see the Empress card as uh, she's like the bringing together of all the queens, you know, the queen of crystals with the pent queen of pentacles with the queen of swords and the queen of cups and the queen of wands. You put all those all together. If once you can master all of like the four suits, the four different like strands of life lessons, then you can become the empress. And that is, uh, I think what you want to be doing and just getting a quick glance at the other cards here. That's, that's absolutely where you guys are going. So whatever being the empress means to you, hold on to that vision. Definitely hold on to it because your spiritual journey here, I mean, we also have the Page of Cups. So you might not think that this is very uh, related to the Empress, right? <laughs> if you want to be the Empress, how is, how is the Page of Cups? But it, that's, again, why I'm thinking that you are beginning your spiritual journey. And the Page of Cups is really leaving behind this kind of like reality centered vision becoming the page of cups being willing to walk out there being willing to be to be the page you know who's kind of naive who's a bit of a student a bit of a beginner walking out into that watery realm of your illusions of your emotions of your feelings of your spiritual journey you'll be when when this woman in the six of swords uh leaves behind this, you're going to be turning in to the Page of Cups, so which is an upgrade. I really like all, all of your uh, cards at the top of the spread. They're all upgrade cards. Again, over here, we got the Lovers, which we're going to get to. Um, but I want to take a look at this Eight of Swords first. This is kind of your energetic health. So things that could be holding you back as well as energies you can be using to, like, cantilever on up to, you know, be <laughs> bigger and better things. Uh, Eight of Swords, obviously always that energy of entrapment, but also really being trapped by your own belief systems, by your own inability to see things clearly. But what I really, really love about this particular Eight of Swords is that it it's not just like you're trapped and that's it. It's that it's just, as soon as she's done like loitering around in these uh, in this graveyard almost, in this like empty battlefield, 
she gets to go through this triangular portal and on into her new reality. And it's really hard to see, but there is an onk up here. Look out for onks when you see them or hear about them. Um, little breadcrumb trails uh, inviting you to look at something a little deeper. So follow up on that when you see those around because you're going to be chasing the onk through this portal. So one of the things you're going to be letting go of is that that sense of fear and that sense of being a victim. You're going to realize that you came here, you chose to count, you chose to come here. You weren't put here, you know, you weren't born here by accident. You chose to come here. You chose your parents, you chose your childhood. You mapped out your whole life. And you did this for specific reasons and you're going to be going to be remembering that. Uh really, I think this month <laughs> yeah, and down here, the Seven of Cups, this is, you know, the spread calls it the Akashic position, which I really feel is like your deep, um, your deep past and your possibilities and what a card to get uh, in a place of possibilities. Seven of Cups. You had, the world was, I, I'm really seeing this as before you incarnated, right? Um, like you were in the Akash, you were floating around in the ether, looking at all of your possibilities, looking at all of the different things, things you as a consciousness go on to do. Like imagine floating around in the void, looking at all the possible multiverses you could choose to go hang out in for a while. You know, as a star seed, you're not, um, well, I mean, some star seeds might have incarnated over and over and over again in one star system and then come to earth, right? Some people who, you know, resonate really strongly with, uh, like the Pleiades, they maybe, you know, only hung out in the Pleiades cluster for a long, long time. And then they came to Earth. And so they feel like, you know, they are Pleiadian, right? It's not that, that they hung out there for a while. It's that that really is a big part of their identity. Um, I'm feeling like for you guys, maybe you've wandered around quite a bit. And therefore, even though, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm a little bit Syrian. I'm a little bit Arcturian. But it's not like you're from there, right? It's like imagine kids who... In, in, in the U.S., they always have a particular type of family, like a military family where the kids, you know, maybe never go to a school like <laughs> twice in a row, you know, two grades in a row at the same school. And these kids often feel like that, you know, they don't have a hometown. They're not really from anywhere. Um, it's that kind of energy for a, a lot, a lot of star seeds, because, you know, the whole <laughs> the whole of all of there is is open to you and you've been around um, and you, so you had all of these possibilities and yet you chose to come here. And once you really realize that of like literally all possible and unimaginable possibilities that you chose to be here on earth in this body that you're in doing whatever you're doing right now, that's really, really mind boggling. And that is the level of deep possibility that you navigated in order to get here. And there's going to be a certain amount of like <laughs> reckoning up with that because that is a a huge topic that I can't even I can't even really begin to unravel that for you because you're going to be unraveling that for yourself and a beautiful card to have here this is your strengths the strengths that you can and especially like with this spread it's not really like a past present future thing but i think that element is definitely there so these are i really see these as strengths that you can be leaning into it's your star seed you know so you're going to be remembering things about your past lives you're going to you're going to start to remember the star systems that you had many lives in or pivotal lives in you know maybe you lived outside of star systems you know don't let whatever you read on the internet about star seeds, like limit <laughs> your perception of your own soul's experience, because it can get way weirder than anything you read, you know, in the first top 10 results on Google when you Google star seeds. So, uh, basically <laughs> see how this woman, um, it's like a nuclear bomb is going off behind her. She's just like exploding out of the, out of the picture. Like look at this level of energy that is coming off shit it's like coming out of her heart it's exploding up out of her you can this is what this is the kind of energy you guys can tap into if you choose to and follow that follow that wherever it takes you follow your heart and follow it where it takes you because 
this is your strength, your star seed, yourself, your soul, your consciousness. This is your strength and all you have to do is tap into it and follow it. Everything will be open to you. This is your the, car, the card in the position of love and emotions. You got the lovers. So part of your awakening might include manifesting a soulmate or a twin flame. But this is also just learning to love. Maybe I'm actually really getting... Learning to love humans or humanity in general. Uh, you know, a lot of us have struggled with that. We come here and as small children, it's like, this is so wrong. This is just wrong. Everything about this culture I was born into is wrong. Everything about the world is wrong. It is so easy to just stew in that for forever going and just tearing down, you know, things about society going, that is bad. That is bad. That is horrible. That's disgusting. That makes me want to die. I'm just going to throw myself off a cliff. But once you kind of tune into these possibilities that you navigated in your past, um, once you embody this empress and once you are willing to open up your heart and engage in your or step onto you, your starseed path, leaning into your starseed strengths, you will be able to open up, uh, open up to love on a level that you haven't experienced before. And that you can direct that however you please. But I really feel like part of this will be reconciling your issues with the humans. Because you'll remember eventually that, you know, <laughs> you're a human too. You know, you're in a human body just because you haven't only lived on earth that doesn't make you any less human you know how many lives have you had on had on earth you probably don't know exactly right now i doubt you remember all of them <laughs> and uh, even if you feel like this is your first one i mean it could be but i think it's probably not i used to think that i this was my first life on earth until i remembered like three past lives and now i know i have i've been here for a while so i would just say watch out for that feeling of going this is my only life i've ever had on earth cuz i mean Sure, it might be. Don't, you know, don't listen to me if, you know, you really think that that's not true for you. But I would just say probably you had at least a few other ones. And you're no less human than all of these humans, you know. In fact, you might be more than human, but you're not less than human. Something to think about. Oh, and I'm just noticing that down here uh, in your healing position, the Four of Wands, which is such a home environment... I often think of it as the party castle. Some other decks show the four of wands as that uh, castle with like streamers going off and stuff and everything's happy and you're getting into a happy home. And <laughs> to have that stemming uh, kind of being the lower evolution of the lovers here is really telling. So you guys are probably going to be manifesting, if not a partner, um, a better family life or that, you know, that also includes your friends or meeting your soul family. Wow meeting your soul family because it's under underneath the underneath the lovers that is definitely a soul family energy and that doesn't necessarily mean that you know you're going to you know meet 10 of your soul family you guys are all going to shack up together in some commune or something <laughs> and live this like idyllic life you know it could be you literally meet somebody in passing and you know you you know that like your consciousnesses remember each other and uh or you, like you just click, you look into each other's eyes and there's something there. Or people that you even just like meet on a forum on the internet. Um, you know, a couple of comments and suddenly you guys are like, wow, like there's so much resonance here. Even if you like, even if that's just a really passing connection, that connection was not accidental. And it is, it can be really like activating and healing for both of you. Even if in this life, you know, you're not meant to be hanging out together a lot. Um, pay attention for those little, little meetings that are way more significant than they might seem. Um, and really just appreciate them for what, what they are, even, even if they don't last as long as you might want. And greatest potential is the Knight of Swords, but this is a very special Knight of Swords card. She is staring with her foot down, down, right into that portal. She looks like she's going to jump, but this is not a uh, a throwing yourself off the cliff kind of energy like I just mentioned before. Um, actually, before I really paid any attention to this card, this is, you might be jumping off a cliff, but you're jumping down on into this portal because you can learn to trust where this is going. Look at the cards it's surrounded by. Starseed, 
Four of Wands, the Lovers. There is some kind of portal. I think if you transit through trusting in your own strengths, your own abilities, um, in your own, own consciousness, you can go through this portal and meet your soul family is really how I'm going to see that. Okay, and just to kind of sum this all up, I'd like to pull two cards from the uh, Starseed Oracle. Okay, what do we have here? Child of the Cosmos and Water Your Garden. Let's take a look at this one first. Child of the Cosmos, the intelligence of the universe lies within you. That is that is so perfect. This is this is like the starseed card of this deck, of this oracle deck. Um it emphasizes not only like are you a cosmic consciousness, you know, that your consciousness goes far, far, far beyond Earth. But also that I, I, lo I love putting it right next to the Empress here because it really emphasizes that you don't need to be looking for the answers or guidance or validation from anywhere outside of yourself because literally the universe is inside you. You know, like when you close your eyes and imagine something and you're trying to get into a meditative state. Does it ever feel like the void opens up in the middle of your skull and there's a, this like immense, immeasurably immense space inside of your, inside of your head, like physically inside of your head. That's this kind of energy. Um, this card is getting at. It's all in there. You don't need to be looking for it anywhere, anywhere else. And water your garden, nourishment, body care, tenderness, and rest. So <laughs> I think this is a nice reminder. While all of this craziness is going down, you know, while you're turning away from your past paradigms, while you're realizing that there's more to life than this, while you're moving through your illusions, becoming the empress, you know, walking out on your journey into more love and fulfillment and going through this portal, um, you know, take care of yourself. <laughs> um, really, this card looks like somebody wants to have a bath, like with one of those like flower baths, you know, not just a bath bomb, but baths with like flower petals in it. If you like doing that, definitely, you know, light some candles and have yourself a good soak. Um, if you've been overdoing it, take some time off to just chill out because all of these... Um, energies. This isn't so much something that you need to be like, make, you don't need to make yourself a checklist and, you know, work, 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 work through all of this. This is happening and it's going to be unfolding over the next month. And you, you're already, you're already on this journey because, you know, this started with the six of swords. So you're not like back, you're not back at the three of swords with the heartbreak. You're not back at the five of swords cleaning up after the battle. You're already moving on from this. So you guys already know what I'm talking about because you've been through this already. Um, don't be afraid to take a break while this is while this is all unfolding and all all happening. I think um, when I was just looking at this to see if there's anything that I more that I would like to mention, really my eyes are just drawn to this starseed card. Just as the month unfolds, remember that this is you. Take a look at that energy exploding, like out the top of her head. That's you. And never forget it, guys. So hang tight. And uh, get let's get uh, through Pisces season and this Mercury retrograde as best we can. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. The very first two things that jumped out at me here is the Three of Swords and the Seven of Swords. And even with this Three of Swords sitting on top of it, the Six of Cups, where she's looking back at this castle which almost seems to be in like a dream state in a kind of cloudy like cloudy and gloomy you know she's on this beautiful beach looking back at some memories that I think should be happy and pleasant but are actually kind of poisoned and you guys I really feel have been going through some kind of heartbreak I mean three of swords right and this is in the shadow position 
maybe you guys don't even know how much something is bothering you. Um, and I really feel like this is involving a, a person because of, because of this level of heartbreak. It could be like a romantic situation, but the first thing I thought of actually was, you know, sometimes uh, if you have a younger sibling or a child, if you're old enough to have grown children, um, when they're not doing so well in life or when they seem to be making ridiculous choices, it is really, really painful to watch that. And you just want to fix it. You want, you want to be like, you know, knock that shit off, you know, break up with that guy, quit that job or, you know, get off the couch, whatever it is, or, you know, stop doing heroin, whatever it is that they're doing. You, you just want to fix it because it is, it is absolutely killing you to watch it. Um, it might be that it's that kind of energy. Uh, maybe it's just a friend who, who's been sleeping on your couch and you keep dragging them back to rehab and they're not getting clean. Um, that kind of thing. Because your shadow is the three of swords. Your limitations and karma is you looking back on a past that has been poisoned and up here, your love and emotions is the seven of swords. So you're definitely feeling like there's some kind of deceit going on here. You're feeling maybe you want to deceive somebody. Maybe you're going to trick somebody into going into detox. Not that I think that, you know, everybody watching this is literally doing that. That's an, just an example of sometimes you feel like it's okay to trick people into doing something that's good for them. I mean, I'm not here to judge. Maybe they really do need an intervention, but um, this is definitely an invitation to think about your motivations and to think about whether the ends really justify the means. And again, down here, oppression. This is this deck's devil card. When I was going through my awakening, I was getting this card all the time because I was a person who was like, real, like I thought too much, guys. Like I thought so much that I had driven myself to the brink, beyond, over the brink of insanity. I, I have been completely like psychotically mad <laughs> at points in my life uh, because of my like compulsive, compulsive thinking. And I know that, you know, now I understand all of the different, or at least some of the different um, influences that, you know, led me down that road. Um, so this is, this is really complex whenever this card comes up. But the main thing that for me that this reminds me of is whatever you're compulsively thinking about all the time, all the time, all the time, you got to find a way to let that go. And I know how, I know how infuriating that is to hear people tell that to you, but I think you already know it. And I think that's why it's triggering to hear that. And I'm saying this because I've li I've been in that exact situation. Like I I've literally thrown this card across the room because I was tired of it coming up, you know, like for the seventh time in 10 days. And I, I was still being like obsessive about something. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to knock it off. I, I wanted to, <laughs> to keep being, uh, an asshole harping on the same problem. Um, but luckily, uh, I think this, if you're watching this, especially if you're watching this when I'm filming it in Pisces season, like there's no better time than Pisces season to really finally let go of something and like, let it have the final death. Cause when the sun rises on the first day of Aries in a month, you know, that, that's just going to be a huge a huge rebirth. You know, this is the end of the astrological year. And I mean, how perfect, uh, the very top here, your spiritual journey is the wheel of fortune. So you are absolutely being given an opportunity here to start anew. This is going to be a new cycle for you. Right now you're at the end of the cycle. You know, I feel like you're probably like right down here and you're about to come coming right back up. Or, you know, if we're looking at on the clock, you know, we're at, you know, we're, we're minutes to midnight <laughs> right now. I, I feel like that's where you're at. And, uh, okay. So the center of your reading is the Ace of Crystals. This is your kind of how you're doing, what you're up to, your personal self. And since, and since it's an Ace, I feel like you either just have, or you're just about to, um, really come to that new beginning. Like, look how aligned this is with the Ace of Crystals in the middle. And the crystals in the stick are pentacles. Uh, the strength card underneath. So whatever troubles you've been going through um, with your friends, family, relationships, or yourself, you absolutely have the strength to see this through. And really, I think the strength has been seeing you through. Because this is the deep foundational energy of this whole spread. 
I feel like you've been holding shit together for people. Um, maybe to the extent where you should have, maybe you were doing too much. You got two kings here. You got the king of wands in your ambitions, which really tells me that you have been manifesting everything. Like, I feel like the king of wands and the king of swords, really, but especially the king of wands is like this, like, covering energy that, like, lays over everything and comes down on it. <laughs> I don't, maybe that's kind of a weird explanation, but that that's just the sense I get. It's almost like a bedspread over, over everything. You've been imposing your will from the top down. Um, and, I mean, that's crossed by the, the oppression card, the devil card. Um, your energetic health is the eight of wands which is always that card of uh, things changing really quickly, things moving. So you've been very adaptable. Um, and I think you will continue to be able to adapt as you move through this portal. That's why I like this particular Eight of Wands. It's not just those, uh, you know, sticks flying through the air, almost as a sign of battle. It's an invitation to go through this portal. So you, I think, can pivot very, very quickly, which is perfect next to this Ace of Crystals because you are embodying that new beginning and there's a real possibility with the wheel of fortune to have that new the change in cycles and like i was mentioning before this is the perfect time of year for that and your strengths is the magician <laughs> uh, again the, wow the cards are sort of repeating themselves um you've been pulling everything together and alchemizing it in a way but the magician it's not like, the magician isn't like temperance where kind of the alchemy is going on inside of you. The magician to me, you know, is almost like a witch who uses her tools, who uses ingredients from the earth, who uses crystals, whatever it is she's going to be taking things around her, adding in her own will, and then using that to affect the environment around, around her. So it's a really externalizing energy. Yeah, using external tools to affect the energies around you. So you you guys might... <laughs> I think it's fair to say that this whole spread really suggests that you guys have been a, like rather controlling. And again, I don't want you to think that I'm like shitting on you for that because I am, am very controlling. Like, guys, I have, a, I have a Capricorn stellium. I have the Sun, uh, Uranus, Neptune, Saturn and Mercury all in Capricorn. And like, I get it. I get this devil energy, okay? <laughs> um, I have been controlling to the point of trying to micromanage my entire universe. And, you know, from one obsessive compulsive type person to another, you know, it's, at some point, you know, you guys know, just like I used to know that at some point you're gonna have to let that go. Because all instead of all of this uh, external um, manifestations, you're going to need to be going inside to do the inner work. And I know you guys are doing that because of this Ace of Crystals. That is really, you guys are already turning, turning inward. And I think any messages that you're receiving from me right now are just kind of confirmation that you are on the right track to be letting go. You're on the right track to be um, taking a step back. You may be on the right track even to letting people make their own mistakes, which I know, I know how hard that is to to try and to learn and to try to admit but uh over here your greatest potential is the king of swords and this is a beautiful king of swords Let's see if i can get this to zoom in on it um so not only do we have this really you know king like this this is this is such a kingly figure in like a almost like mythological sense you know like the the true mythological symbol of the king as you know the figure that organizes chaos, brings safety, stability, security, peace, happiness, and fulfillment to the kingdom. He's also, this is a holy figure because he's got, he's a trinity. He in and of himself is a trinity. There's two ghosts of himself beside him. So obviously the trinity and the, the you know, the, the light bringing king, so many connotations there. <laughs> so many connotations there, which I don't actually want to get too into. I think you guys kind of see where I'm going from with that, but what, since this is your greatest potential, this really tells me that once you let go of that need to compulsively, obsessively control everything, 
you will actually be able to, you're not going to be completely giving up. This is not, this is not a spread of like completely like, this is not the Phoenix, right? You're not being asked to burn up and be born again. That's not this. You're, this isn't no death card, no tower card, uh, no 10 of swords, none of that. This is not a complete rebirth. This is just asking for maturation and growth and refinement. So you need to be toning back any kind of, you know, OCD, micromanaging, hypercritical, hyperthinking. You guys, if you think too much, like meditate, you know, learn to tone that back. Um, and if that seems scary, and I know it does, <laughs> it's going to be okay because you're not actually like letting go of these aspects of your personality. You're just going to be transmuting them. You're going to be, yeah, alchemizing all of it. And then you're actually going to be able to step into the embodiment of your own archetype and be the king of swords. It's like you've been trying to be the king of swords, but instead of being able to truly step into that in a mature, like divine way, you were sort of more like a, almost like the knight of swords, which which isn't here, but it's, it's that sort of level of a, Imagine a medieval king. Imagine a medieval king who is the king of swords, who is completely, who is completely uh, embodying the highest evolution of, of, of the suit of swords. And imagine he's trying to raise his son, the crown prince, to take over, and his son is just running around, being irresponsible, um, maybe letting his power go to his head, micromanaging the servants, you know, maybe trying to lead people in battle, even if he doesn't entirely know what he's doing. That sort of thing. You were sort of a lower evolution. Like, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that because we all have to go through those phases. You can't just like be born and become the king of swords. You have to go all, work your way all the way up. And you guys are like so close. You're almost there. And you're, you're going to be there. Like this month, I think that you're going to be able to really see what aspects of your behavior are holding you back and are actually not in line with your goals. And, you know, your goals is to be the king of wands. That's your, that's your ambition. But I think you'll find that your greatest ambition to be the King of Wands is the King of Wands is more the guy who manifests everything that he desires. You're not so much going to be directly manifesting those things like that. You're going to be the King of Swords who can sit there as this holy personage. And I feel like instead of directly trying to manifest things like with your magic wand... You're going to just be able to think them, conceive of them, and they will literally turn into reality. You'll be manifesting with your thoughts and with your intentions, not with your actions. I think there I finally hit on uh, to me what this entire, entire spread is meaning to me. So I'm going to repeat myself. You think you want to manifest your ideal reality by directly managing and puppeting everybody and everything around you so that you feel like that's the only way you can get your desired outcome. But that's not the case. If you just continue evolving, and you will, and just set your intentions and trust in yourself and trust that the universe gives you what you're working towards, you'll be able to sit there in your lazy boy intending for things to come out a certain way and they will. If you can only release all of this, you know, all of this oppression, you just have to release the devil, <laughs> you know, as if it's that easy, right? As if it's that easy. But, you know, for her, you know, she just needs to take this uh, sheet off of her head and to see that she doesn't need to be trying so hard to get everything the way she wants it because she is already like telekinetic. She is levitating these objects. She just can't see it, right? She can levitate those objects without even, you know, without tying strings to them. She doesn't need to manipulate those objects into levitating. They levitate simply because she wills it to happen. And I think I'll pull two oracle cards from the star Starseed Oracle, just to sum this up. Uh, that one wanted to come out, okay. Okay, a jumper. What do we got here? The 
Seven Star Sisters, Birthing Creations, Tapestry of Life, Expression. I really like this because this is bringing in uh, a really feminine energy. This is talking about uh, birthing creative projects um, kind of naturally and with grace and with flow without having to kind of micromanage your own self. And if you take a look at the spread, this is like really masculine energy. So I think bringing in the seven star sisters is a little bit of a reminder is like, you know, you don't need to become super feminine and I don't care if you're what kind of body you're in, right? <laughs> you don't need to become super feminine, but this is an invitation. I think saying that if you balance your masculine and feminine, feminine energies a little bit more, um, even incorporate, maybe you're a really masculine type of persona. And if you bring in your feminine energies just a little bit more, that will actually help you um, embody your highest potential as the King of Swords. Because the King of Swords is not out of, not he's not out of balance. He is a specific type of archetype. He is a sub archetype of the Emperor, as I see him. And he does skew masculine. He does skew logic. He does skew left brain. Um, but He's such a divine character. And I, I never use that word divine and sacred. I don't, I don't, I don't know. They're just not like my favorite, favorite words. But I mean, I can't help but say anything else because of the way he, he is like the embodiment of a trinity. So yeah, I, I mean, that, that that's basically it. Don't be afraid to cultivate a little bit more of your feminine energies in order to balance uh, yourself and embody the king of swords. And the other one here is... Star Ancestors, Hidden Secrets, Lost Wisdom, Look a Little Deeper. Okay, I love this because the Star Ancestors card is right next to the Seven Star Sisters card in the deck. And they talk about similar things, but this is, again, um, balancing out the really feminine energy of the Star Sisters with kind of the masculine version, your Star Ancestors. Um, this card is all about, I mean, look, it's the pyramids, right? <laughs> um, receiving transmissions from your, if you guys are in touch with any like starseed guides or with your past selves, if you're just in touch with your higher self, whatever it is, this is, this card really talks about if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like you're in some kind of rut, if you're in some kind of cycle that you can't break out of, you need to use your creativity, use your inner knowing, use your, your remembrance of everything that goes beyond earth. You know, use your intuition, use your heart to touch into abilities, knowledge, even technology, like, you know, the pyramids, which were healing structures. Um, really what I'm getting here is tap into your own memories in order to help you find a creative solution to your problem. So whatever you were going through with the three of swords and the seven of swords, whatever this pain, this heartbreak is, I really think there's... There is a solution to be found. There is hope to be cultivated. You just need to do something you haven't tried yet. You need to do something completely new. And you might think that you've tried everything, but there's always another axis to go down. There's always another level to whatever it is to be explored. You just need to find that inner creativity to figure out what that is. And you guys will absolutely do it because... The wheel of fortune you know <laughs> your fortunes are changing you have the inner strength you're going to be bringing together the energies of the king of wands and the king of swords so you can you guys can do whatever it is that you want to do just don't be afraid to you don't need to do everything yourself don't be afraid to reach out to your star sisters and your star ancestors you know there is more knowledge out there than you could possibly imagine because right now you're in a human body and you've forgotten you've forgotten what's out there so reach out Use your imagination and the solutions will come to you. And I think I'm going to leave it at that, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Okay, pile three, welcome to your reading. Uh, honestly, I don't even know where to begin with this. Uh, in no particular order, your spread contains the tower, transformation, which is death, the emperor, the star, the Akashic records, which is a bonus card in this deck talking about it's it's just the Akashic Records. So it's unlimited potential um, and there's a portal in the middle of the card. And it's also to me symbolizes uh, the ether, you know, or the void, which is the, you know, 
the mother of all that there is, is how some people describe it. The literally like the quantum soup of potential where everything comes from. Um, ten of ten of crystals, this knight of crystals who was, you know, downloading uh, information from the cosmos. And if did I already mention the emperor and in the center of it all, you are the page of wands about to walk through this portal. <laughs> uh, the the only two sort of cards of middling energy are the four of swords and the five of swords. So I sort of like to almost get those out of the way because, I mean, the five of swords is kind of, you know, that, that, that shitty card that nobody likes seeing. But uh, in the face of all of this other stuff, I don't actually see it as very significant. So it's in the shadow position. And I think this is basically just saying that you guys have, you know, you've, you've got crap in your past. You went through some painful experiences. Maybe you're feeling a little embattled and, you know, maybe there are some wounds in your past that you haven't healed yet. But I don't think, like, this isn't, like, a big deal for you guys. Like, even if, you know, 10 years ago you were crying yourself to sleep every night because of the shit that happened to you in your childhood, that's not, like, keeping you down anymore. Even if you have some lingering resentments and some lingering emotional baggage, it, like, you guys are okay because you are transcending this, like, hugely. And any remaining, you know, any remaining baggage is going to be healed, uh, healing position, of this spread is this knight of crystals and i see this as an external figure who is going to be like literally helping you bring in healing from the universe like like can you see the uh can you see the uh downloads he's getting like this lightning coming in um you know you might be receiving healing from an interdimensional uh this could be somebody you meet who you might see an actual healer who helps facilitate that kind of healing or just one of your friends happens to listen to you talk over a beer one night, whatever it is. But, you know, these these past painful experiences are not a big deal. So I don't think they're actually like a very prominent place in this spread. Um, it's just that this spread kind of captures everything about well, what's going on with you right now. Uh, and what is going on with you is you are about to... Um, okay, I... I <laughs> As I was about to talk about how you're walking through all of these portals, um, I was gonna. I heard uh, braid in, which is, it just means that you guys are retrieving soul fragments, um, which, and you're going to be braiding in aspects of your higher self, and you know you can Google walk in and braid in, and you're gonna get a lot of weird shit, and you can read about that if you want, but don't. Like, take all of it too literally when it comes to this kind of information, especially the kind of stuff that you're going to find in the first few pages of Google. It's all very weird uh, and very distorted. My cat agrees, if you can uh, hear her. <laughs> um, uh, so, and a lot of that stuff, if you guys start Googling raid in and walk in, um, it's going to be really low frequency for you guys. You guys are beyond that. So, I mean, Google away, but you're not going to find a whole lot that's helpful to you. Um, so let me just try to be clear what I mean about, I don't, I don't think any of you are actually going to have a walk-in experience, you know, where your soul leaves and somebody else's soul walks into your same body. Um, I don't, I, cause that does happen, but it's really rare. And that's not what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing more of a, a braid in experience where, you know, it might start slowly and everybody retrieves pieces of their soul fragments um, kind of naturally as they heal. That This is like, I know it sounds like really like, wah, but, you know, anybody who's going through any kind of healing experience is going to be retrieving pieces of their soul and they become, as they develop and evolve their consciousness, and as, you know, even if they just, even if you're just doing healing on a really mundane level, like, you know, seeing a therapist work through your childhood trauma, like on an entirely like non-spiritual level, those people are still retrieving pieces of their soul. Um you guys, it's going, so, you know, that's been probably been going on for you for a while. That's how you're getting to this level. Cause like, you're like absorbing all of the light that you've lost over, you know, all of your past traumas and it's all, your light is all coming back to you. Um, something bigger is going to be happening here. <sighs> There's a few different ways to be thinking about it. Uh, the way I have experienced it and think about it is 
There's going to be an aspect of your higher self, could be from whatever dimension or outside of dimensions. Um, I wouldn't get too caught up in trying to like figure out exactly like, oh, is, is, is that like my fifth dimensional self? Is that my 10th dimensional self? What universe is that? Blah, blah. I mean, if you can figure that out, great, but I, I wouldn't be too attached to that. So what's important is that some aspect of your higher self you have raised your consciousness, you have like increased your light quotient enough that you're going to be getting in touch with that other aspect of yourself and they are going to be coming down, 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 down in in order to rejoin you because, you know, you, you guys are all just different aspects of your, your consciousness and that aspect of yourself is going to come down here and hang out with you. <laughs> you know, inhabit, inhabit the same embodiment. And, you know, th the amount of shifts that start happening after that happens, um, you know, it's going to blow everything out of the water, like in, in a good way, in a good, good way. Um, I mean, this is the tower. And I love how for you guys, the tower is in the ambitions section. So you guys, maybe you've been sitting around like going like, I want the next level of spiritual enlightenment. I want to bust out of the matrix. I want to ascend. You know, maybe you've just been thinking about how you want to be fifth dimensional, but this is like, you might be busting out like way past that. Um, you know, limitations in karma, you have the star. So I don't see that as a limitation at all. If that's your karma, that's like awesome karma. Uh, to me, this is the effect that... <laughs> You know, the star is literally a, it's a fallen star. It's the car, star coming down to earth. Not like fallen stars and like a fallen angel, like a bad way, but it's literally just a piece of the heavens, a piece of higher dimensions, a piece of, you know, whatever is out there has come to earth, has shot down. And here you are. That's what your, these other aspects of yourself is going to be doing. Your higher self is going to be like sending a little, a piece of yourself, bam, down into you. Um, your energetic health is the emperor, so you're doing fantastic. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I guess there's a few other cards that might be more awesome. Uh, but in terms of energetic health, like the emperor, what a good, what a good, what a good card for your health. Like, you are the master of your environment. Your energy levels are just spot on. You know, maybe you uh, you you seem to be skewing a little bit masculine, which. I mean, is great. I mean, it doesn't matter if you skew masculine or feminine. Feminine doesn't matter what kind of body you're in, any of that. You know, you can... Some people skew masculine for like lifetimes and lifetimes. Other people skew masculine, skew feminine, depending on their lives, which kind of body they're in. Um, some people, <laughs> you know, one day is one thing, one day is the other thing. None, none of that really matters right now. Um, you know, feel free to tap into your masculine energies, which could just be, you know, left brain activities, scientific activities, competitive activities even. If you're really feeling like getting out there and playing some rugby, knock yourself out. Um, that feels off topic, but maybe that was, <laughs> that must have been relevant to somebody. Um, you got, we also got, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, the Ten of Crystals down here is in the Akashic position, which is, I feel like that is like your really deep energies. And man, so we have the Akashic Records here, which is your strengths in the strength position and the Ten of Crystals in the Akashic position. So those are really closely tied. And this just tells me that whatever you have cultivated throughout this lifetime and previous incarnations, you guys have been cultivating like everything. And that is why you're going to be able to get this tower moment, why you're going to be able to get this downloads of healing, why you're going to be braiding in aspects of your higher self because you are so fucking ready you're so ready because you have got all your ducks in a row you have gotten you have you have done so much healing you've done so much learning you've gained so much wisdom you know it's not it's not like uh like you're perfect and you have nowhere else to go it's that you are so ready to level up you know it's like any kind of a human human games um like you guys might be sitting there, maybe you're like rotting away, you're watching this on a five-year-old phone, like in a friend's basement, because you know, your life is so much in a shitty place, but don't worry about that, <laughs> because you know, the regular human game isn't for you guys, because you guys have been waiting to explode, you guys have been just waiting to level up, you've been doing your own thing, you've been doing your own inner work, and 
It totally doesn't matter at all how that is reflecting in your environment in the human society because you guys came here for more than that. You're not here to work a job. You're not here to work a really good job in a corporate office. I mean, your path could absolutely take you um, down down a path where you work in a corporation. But if that is the case, that'll it'll be a corporation that you love. Maybe it's one that you founded, or maybe it's one that just has such an awesome, high frequency, high vibe environment that is like really nourishing for you. So it doesn't matter how any of this plays out in the material world. What matters is the is it the quality of it. It doesn't matter what you do. It matters how you do it, why you do it, and how it feels when you do it. <sighs> um, okay, I think this is where I want to talk about all of these portals. Um, in the center of the spread, you know, your your current self is the Page of Wands. And here she's looking back. She's like, I'm ready to start on this journey. Like, she's almost like the Sorcerer's Apprentice, but, you know, she's not going to go like Mickey Mouse and, you know, summon a bunch of broomsticks that create a flood everywhere she is going to she's looking back one last time going hey guys i'm going through this portal and this is so cool because this tower card to me re always reminds me of like this tower isn't falling down a lot of tower cards are all like oh you know the tower is crumbling the foundations are crumbling to me this tower is an initiation that you're going into you're going to enter this tower and that is when everything is going to going to bust out. This 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 tower is something that's been on the horizon for you. You've been consciously working towards it because that is how like high vibrational this is. It's not just that, you know. Your reality doesn't have to knock the tower out from underneath your feet in order to, to get you to uh, evolve. You have consciously been heading towards that tower. Like you've been on a quest. You're gonna go there. You're gonna get to that tower. You're going to be like, okay, tower, you're not going to destroy my life. You're going to transform it. You're going to go into that tower. That's what she's doing here. She's going into this portal. She's going to go into that tower. She's going to hang out here uh, in the Akashic Records for a bit and see all of her infinite potential. And this really is where uh, where that braid in can be occurring. Um, when I had the experience of braiding in an aspect of myself, um, you know, I spent a while trying to figure out what dimension she had been in. And then I figured out that she was in the ether. Because to me, that's what it, when I saw her, um, like, that's where I felt like I was. I was, I was in the ether. That is just what it felt to me. And I remember, uh, I, like, I didn't know what to think about any of this. I thought, well, maybe she was just in the fifth dimension. Maybe I was just in the fifth dimension. Uh, and then I flipped up, I pulled a card out of this deck and I got the Akashic Records. And I was like, holy shit, like, holy shit right? <laughs> I, I was, I was in the ether. I was in the Akash. I was in the ether. That, that was it. That, I was in the void. I, you know, braided in an aspect of myself that had been in the void. You know, the implications of that, I am still working through, you know, just like you guys are. And you don't have to have any expectations about how this braided experience uh, can happen. You might be, you might have like a an experience where you actually know what is happening. You know, it might be really confusing. It might just be happening in your dreams. You might have a day where you're really, really sick. Like inexplicably, I got really sick. I thought it was food poisoning. That's what I've been telling people. It wasn't food poisoning, guys. I Like the energetic um, trauma of braiding in your higher, like an aspect of your higher self into your human body. That is like, your body needs to be, it needs to empty itself, right? Like, <laughs> um, and I, I was... I don't know, maybe in the future I'll make a whole, a whole video explaining, describing this whole experience, but it was really like, I was seeing a lot of things and I was kind of going in and out of consciousness and it was the single most fascinating experience of my life, but you don't have, don't have any expectations about how it'll play out for you. I've heard other people, their stories are completely different. Um, I know that some people have braided in aspects of themselves without like noticing. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be this big like deal moment. You know, you might notice, you might just start noticing that it might suddenly just feel like everything is so much better now and so much easier that almost like you can't relate to your past self. Like you can't relate to your past self. That might be how you experience it. And I just got to notice that my Battery is dying, so I'm going to take this as a sign that um, this reading actually needs to come to a conclusion pretty quickly. And we're actually almost there. 
because um, your greatest potential is the nine of crystals, which like, look at her. She's just opening up her arms <sighs> saying, you know, come down, come and get me. And up here with your transformation. She's like opening her arms to this transformation. This is the death card, but since this deck is so far high frequency, it's not death because death, of course, doesn't really exist as we think it. You're just being transformed. And this transformation is going to happen once you go through the tower, you go through the portal, you know, then you're going to be walking into this transformation. And the only card we haven't talked about here is your spiritual journey, uh, which is the Four of Swords, which just tells me that, like, take a chill pill while all this is happening. You need to let this play out, like, even for a couple of months. Just go easy on yourself. Take a break. You, like, you can't be, like, pushing your body while it's integrating, like, this level of... <laughs> this level of energetic integration. Like, you, you just take a nap, sleep. You don't even have to meditate. Meditate if you feel good, but if you're starting to feel really, really ungrounded or like just like really wobbly or nauseous, like you can experiment. Is is meditating making you feel more centered or is it actually making you feel less grounded? A lot of the time people are always, you need to meditate in order to feel grounded. You need to meditate in order to feel grounded. But sometimes when you're going through like crazy shit, meditating is actually less grounding. <laughs> so do grounding meditation if that helps. I mean, I almost feel like I shouldn't even give you guys advice because this is going to play out so individually for all of you because when you guys are at this level, it's like you're such unique individuals that there isn't really going to be... I mean, we all are kind of working through these similar patterns, but they manifest with such unique details that, you know, listening to somebody's advice about what they did isn't even really necessarily that helpful to you because your experience is going to be so neat, so unique and so different. And besides, you guys don't need my advice because you got this shit handled. You wouldn't have been able to get here. You know, you wouldn't be having this experience if you weren't ready for it. So, you know, just take it easy. Experiment a little bit with what helps you best. You'll know. Follow, follow, just follow your intuition. Follow your inter intuition. It'll lead you there. And I've got like 10% left. I'm going to pull just one Starseed Oracle card. To see what we got here. Another portal. Look at this, guys. Big picture thinking. Pleiades energy. Visionary, inspired ideas. You're, you're walking through this fucking portal. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You're going through the portal. Big picture thinking, right? Because you are the bigger picture. You're tuning into your bigger picture. You are... You're so much more than you thought you were. You're going to be bringing those pieces back to yourself. You're going to be reconnecting with pieces of your higher self and your higher self is going to be coming down to hang out with you inside of your body. And But don't feel like, just the one thing I want to emphasize here is don't feel like that means that you are going to be not you. You're not going to be less you. You're not going to be somebody else. You're going to be more you than you've ever been and you're going to feel, you're going to feel that in your bones you're going to feel for the first time that you feel like yourself, like more yourself than you've ever felt in your whole life. You're going to finally feel like the self you knew you could be. And the awesome thing, guys, is that, you know, big picture thinking. Once you go through that portal, this doesn't stop. It just goes, it just escalates from here. <laughs> It'll be really interesting. I, I love to think in 20 years for, you know, those of us, because I've been going through this energy myself, like two months ago, this started for me. Um, and, you know, I know people who are just a couple of months ahead of me on this, like, you know, little little uh, linear time frame. It happened for them a few months before it happened to me. Now it's happening to you guys. Uh, 20 years from now, where are we going to be? Where are we going to be, guys? Because once we go through all of these portals, that's it. There's no going back. We just keep, keep evolving and expanding through the big picture portals. So <laughs> congratulations, guys. Thank you for existing so that I could read this spread for you. I actually had a feeling... Uh, this morning that my first two readings were really rough. Um, I was really feeling the Pisces energy, really feeling the <sighs> Mercury retrograde energy. Like my camera kept breaking, my camera arm broke. I couldn't get started. I was, if you watch my first two readings, they're pretty, pretty mumbly. Like I, I'm pretty much exemplifying the Mercury's retrograde energy, but now I am amped. I feel great. I'm going to go take my dog for a really long walk in the sunshine. I'm going to climb up a hill 
And uh, th this infusion of your guys' energy was awesome to experience. And now I know why I had to make this video. So <laughs> thank you and good luck to y'all. And just, I don't know, be yourselves because you're awesome. And I love you. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.